Happy New Year! Well, uh, I'm a week late. I was sick over New Year, so uh, I guess better late than never. I have been waiting for this beer for about eight months. Eight months already. Seven? Seven months? A series of months. A relatively significant number of months, but not a full year. Um, this is the Raspberry Grisette. So Talking Cedar Brewery is a Native, Ar Native American brewery in Grand Mound, Washington. And this is a Grisette beer, which this is the first Grisette I've ever had. But Grisette is apparently one of the family of farmhouse beers that I'm a super huge fan of. Um, Saison's and Beer de Garde are the two other main and more common uh, versions of wild farmhouse beers. Grisette means little gray beer. And that apparently comes from the fact that these beers were um, were brewed by miners. So, you know, rock dust and stuff like that. Gray, whatever. It's a grisette. It's a gray beer. It is a beer for little gray people. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a gray person. Uh, I'm not a miner. You know, whatever. So, we'll, we'll see. But, um, yeah, I've enjoyed some of the, most of the talking cedar beers I've had so far. I bought three bottles of this, and I plan to drink them, one every New Year's, over the next few years. And just off the bat, that has quite a head. Uh, like a Saison, like a Beer de Garde, you'd expect this to be exuberant in its, uh, in its carbonation. Usually naturally carbonated through the work of yeast, not by injection of carbonation. Um, but yeah, that definitely shows up. So that looks like kind of a, a champagne-like look. It's a, a light peach, I might say, color-wise. That's pretty nice. Yeah, maybe an almost uh, a salmon color. Being that we're in the Pacific Northwest, I'm expecting the raspberries they use to brew this beer to be decently fresh um, or local or something like that. Let's see how it holds up. So it definitely smells sharp, bright, um, vibrant. There is a, a juiciness, but it's a, it's a, like a, it's not vinegar. It's just tart. It's a tart juiciness, fruity sourness rather than a, a vinegary sourness. I'm definitely picking up the, the, the raspberry and maybe a hint of a creaminess. The raspberry is almost like like freeze-dried raspberry. I don't know if you've ever had like freeze-dried fruits, but they're very different from dried fruits. They are, they are like all the water is like forcibly extracted. There's not trace amounts of water left. They're not hard and and but still flexible. They're they're uh, they're like cereal kind of consistency. But they also tend to be very kind of intensely flavored because all the water is extracted. You've left behind all the all the, the minerals and, and chemicals that produce the just the flavor of the fruit with none of the water, water to dilute it. And it has that kind of similar kind of potency to the, to the raspberry flavor. Being a, a farmhouse beer, I'm also not going to expect the malt to be a dominant part of this. Um, I'm going to expect maybe some yeasty funkiness and then definitely the fruit and maybe at at most kind of a, a thin cracker um, cracker malt you know real real playing distant second fiddle kind of thing and based on what i'm smelling that's what i'm smelling it's i'm not smelling a maltiness i'm smelling a just a vibrant fruitiness and this nice tartness so uh, let's dive in Interesting. Um, yeah, okay, this is this is interesting. I'm trying to collect my thoughts here a little bit. There's there's definitely like the, the fruits there, but it's 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 a tart fruit. It's not sweet, it's not overly fruited. Um, it's very clean. It's very uh, kind of a refreshing, almost like a 
there was uh calistoga no um there was when i was growing up in the late 80s and 90s early 90s there were like carbonated fruit juices uh from some natural natural fruit brand natural natural juice brand um that we really liked they were our sodas we didn't get soda very often and we were super happy when we got these usually on vacation and in glass bottles or or while camping glass bottles of of this uh juice carbonated juice that was kind of light and this tastes like a a less sweet a drier version of those which is a super good thing but there's also something else going on in there um, towards the end, towards the finish, there is a bit of kind of an interesting funkiness. Not not quite a mushroom funkiness, more a... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word. Eh, orange peel, but like old orange peel. Not not rotten orange peel, just when the orange is kind of... It, it sat on your, your, your basket for a while and it's, it's kind of thin and a little bit harder and it's... The, the flavor, the, the smell, the aroma of the orange peel is kind of intensified a bit, but it also has kind of a mustiness to it or a, an age to the smell. That kind of funkiness. And here in with a, with a bright, uh, bright, tasty beer, that just gives a nice kind of an interesting counterpoint that just makes the beer more fully developed, more than just a... A carbonated fruit juice kind of thing. They do specifically say they did ferment these in Chardonnay barrels. So that might be where some of the kind of the the bright, uh, the sharp flavors come from. You're going to expect a Chardonnay to be real, you know, brightly uh, grapey, but, you know, dry. Chardonnay grapes, super dry um, without being acidic. Uh, it's, a, it's a dry, sharp white wine is what a Chardonnay is. Um, but then they re-ferment this beer on whole raspberries until dryness was achieved again, which is interesting how they did that. Um, they'd have to do that really carefully to make sure that the alcohol didn't get super high. They do rate this at... <laughs> interesting. The alcohol by volume is not visible on the label. I'm not sure if that's legal or not. <laughs> but I won't complain. Um, it doesn't taste very heavy at all. I'm going to guess less than seven, probably four to five percent based on what I'm tasting. Um, but they do say drink it now for a fruit forward experience or cellar for up to three years for a progressively funkier experience. Um, anyways, it certainly makes me interested to see how this develops over time. I'm going to try and take some uh, some more careful notes regarding the tasting. It, there's a lot of different beers that can age traditionally or typically if you're talking to someone oh i love aging beers they're talking about super dark beers about the the stouts maybe a, a bourbon county brand stout if, if that's your thing or a lot of it there's a lot of other imperial stouts that really they develop nicely over time <coughs> over eight with aging so that's more common i've aged a few dark beers but i've definitely preferred aging wild beers saisons and i've only had one to guard um but grisettes now and seeing how they develop and they really kind of open up and, and deepen and they, they develop a real delicious body. Um, but whatever the case, you know, take those take those notes and kind of see how does this develop over time. And you'll probably find, oh, I like this beer best at two years old or three years old. And then you find yourself, you know, taking up space in your cupboards and <laughs> other things like that. But it's well worth doing. And I highly encourage you to try that. It's it's a fun experiment. Plus, you get to drink good beer, and you get to look forward to things, and delayed gratification is such a good thing. Um, anyways, this is the Raspberry Grisette by Talking Cedar Brewery out of Grand Mound, Washington. I'm Matthew. I've been chewing the brew. This is my uh, New Year 2023. We'll open bottle number two, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, on January 1st or December 31st of 2020, well, it'll be next year. Um, December 31st of 23, January 1st, 24, whatever. Um, and then the last bottle the year after, and we'll uh, see how they grow. But I'll catch y'all on the flip side.